Welcome back to the channel everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sharpen end mills on the D-bit grinder, also known as the universal grinder. In the first part of this video, I'll be showing you how to sharpen the end cutting edges of an end mill. And in the second part, I'll be showing you how to sharpen the side cutting edges using the following attachment. Now, if you don't have a D-bit grinder, but some sort of other machine, stick around as I think you will also find this video useful. Before we jump into sharpening the end of an end mill, it is helpful to examine and understand the geometry of those cutting edges. Now I have four end mills here, all at various stages of their life. So let me just take the camera and zoom in on them so we can take a closer look. The cutter you're looking at was never resharpened before now. It was purchased brand new. The following is your cutting edge and this part here is your primary relief angle and this part here is your secondary relief angle now the primary relief angle is typically about 5 degrees and the secondary relief angle is 10 to 12 degrees now as you sharpen the cutter more and more your primary relief angle will get wider and wider when it's new it's about one millimeter but as it gets wider you need to resharpen the secondary relief angle to bring it back to one millimeter so when this um, primary relief angle gets to about two millimeters it's time to resharpen the secondary relief angle as well which is typically the same as resharpening the primary just a different um, setting on the grinder now if we have a look at the very outside of each cutting edge you'll notice that that's where it's worn now the reason for this is that each cutting edge is concave about one to two degrees so when this cutter is spinning, it's typically cutting only on the very outside of each edge. So that's where you'll see most of the wear. So we'll have to factor that in when we're sharpening our end mill. Next, if you have a look between the different cutting edges, you'll notice that there is a relief. It's obvious between these two cutting edges and not so obvious between these two. Now you can cut your own relief using um, a Dremel tool or a grinder. Um, you won't be able to replicate the factory um, relief uh, with simple tools. It's a bit difficult to do so. But I like to do this with a Dremel tool with a thin disc in a crisscross pattern like this. And it's there typically to be able to separate the different cutting edges. So you know where the cutting edge starts and where it stops. And so when you're sharpening, you're not running into the opposing side cutting edge. So that's pretty much all you really need to know about the end of an end mill. And before we get started sharpening, let's take a look at these three cutters that have all been sharpened several times in the past. Now the first cutter we're looking at is a two flute end mill. Now everything shown in this video is equally applicable to two flute and three flute end mills. Now if we have a look at these two cutting edges, you'll notice that there is no relief between them. So I would cut one before sharpening that end mill. So let's pan to the next end mill. So with this end mill, as with the previous end mill, there is really no relief between these two cutting edges. So I would cut one before sharpening that. And you'll also notice that the primary relief on these cutting edges is a bit too thin, which is no problem if we're resharpening as it will get wider after one resharpen. Now let's move on to the last one. Now with this last cutter, you can see that the primary relief is a bit wide. It's approaching two millimeters. So you will definitely really need to resharpen the secondary relief first before sharpening the primary relief. Also, you'll notice that there is no real relief between these two. It's borderline. I would still put one in just to make it easier when resharpening. So it's time to stop talking and start grinding one of these end mills. Um, I'll probably grind this one since it's the hardest to grind. And if I show you how to grind this one, you'll know how to grind pretty much any end mill. So let's get started. So step one, put your end mill in a collet. Don't tighten it just yet. Just have it in there loosely. Put the spindle into the lock position. Now what you'll do next is you will loosen this nut to be able to turn the dial and set your dial to zero then tighten it step number two we want to turn this axis to about 91 to 92 degrees now the dial only goes to 90 degrees and it won't actually allow you to turn more than 90 degrees as you'll notice i'm pushing and it doesn't want to go any further but there is a small pin underneath that once you pull it will let you go 
further. So you want to set it to about 91 to 92 degrees and what that will do is make the cutting edges slightly concave. Not sure if this shows up on camera but we are slightly past 90 degrees, probably about 91 or 92 degrees and this is the following pin that you pull back so you can go beyond 90 degrees on this axis. Step number three, we're going to set the following axis to 12 degrees to cut the secondary relief. And next we want to move everything towards the gr grinding wheel and you want to place the edge as close to the grinding wheel as possible without really contacting it and once it's there lock it into place and then make the cutting edge horizontal as possible to the grinding wheel. Now this is the tricky part. You just have to eyeball it. I haven't found a good way of getting it perfectly horizontal but eyeballing it seems to be good enough. So once you've got it as close as possible to horizontal Tighten your collet. Then loosen it again and move the cutter towards the center of the grinding wheel. So when you're grinding the edge, you're going to be moving in this direction. So if you've got everything set up correctly, you're just going to be turning the following knob to feed the cutter in this way and then you're going to be unlocking this each time you've cut a cutting edge rotating it 90 degrees and then locking it back so let's get started sharpening After several passes on each side, this is what we end up with. Pretty much all the primary facet is gone and this is just the secondary facet. So now I'm going to change the angle from 12 degrees to 5 degrees. And now we're going to grind the primary facet on each side. So this is the end result. It looks okay, but the relief could have been a bit better between the cutting edges, but doing it freehand, it's impossible to get it perfect. Anyway, now it's time to sharpen the flutes on this end mill. They're a bit chipped on some places, but it still should turn out okay. So let's get started. So I've got the milling attachment mounted in the D-bit grinder, and I've got our cutter in the collet. Now you want to tighten that cutter in the collet fairly tight so it doesn't accidentally move. I found it very difficult to hold onto this by hand and tighten it sufficiently. So what I've done is drilled a small dimple over here, which allows me to hold it with this pin wrench when tightening. Next, you'll want to set the following axis to zero, which controls the relief angle on the cutting edge. We want it to be zero for now, but later we will adjust it to the correct angle when actually sharpening the cutter. Once you've done that, you need to adjust the following axis to slightly before zero degrees so that when you're sharpening the edge of the cutter, it's only running along the edge of the wheel. Next, you need to move the cutter a little bit forward, like so, and add some sort of spacer. Now, I've made this um, thing that goes over here to hold the cutter slightly forward. Now you can use anything you want. Um, for example, an Allen key works perfectly fine as well. You just want it to be slightly forward. 
So now that we've moved the cutter forward slightly by putting a spacer, you want to take your cutter and bring it to the corner of the grinding wheel so that the corner of one of the cutting edges it meets the corner of the grinding wheel. And you want to rotate the cutter in such a way that when you draw a line from this cut, cutting edge corner to this cutting edge corner, you want it to be 90 degrees to the wheel. And this is important since when we set the relief angle for grinding the flute, it will be wrong if we get this step wrong. And if we get it wrong, then the cutter might not actually cut. So that's why this is an important step. Now that you've done that, it's a good idea to check that the tips of the cutting edges are still 90 degrees to the grinding wheel. And now we need to put the follower finger inside one of the flutes of the cutter so that it tracks inside. Now the placement is very important. You want to get it right inside that channel. Um, it's going to be hard to see from that angle but um, I'll change the camera angle later and show you exactly where. So and you want to put it at the very very end of the cutter so you get maximum travel. So let me just put it into place and show you from a different angle how it looks. We're almost ready to sharpen, but now we need to set the relief angle for the cutting edge. Now, if you've got a six millimeter cutter, the relief angle is 15 degrees. And if you've got a 20 millimeter cutter or above, the relief angle is five degrees. So this is a 20 millimeter cutter. So we're gonna set the relief angle to five degrees. Like so. And we're nearly ready to grind, we just got to position it to the wheel and give it a few runs to make sure everything is nice and smooth and it's time to sharpen it. Now if you followed all the steps correctly you should be ready to sharpen the cutter. Uh, you want to take very light cuts, not too much otherwise you get too much friction and drag. So let's get going. I like to feed um, the grinding wheel into the cutter. So once you've cut one of the edges, you want to pull back the whole assembly, pull the spacer out, and rotate your cutter to the next edge. Put your spacer back, pull it all the way back, bring it to your grinder, and you're ready to cut the next edge and that's all there is to it so I'll bring you back once I've sharpened the cutter and show you the result so this is how the cutter turned out it looks pretty good um, those chips were already there now some final thoughts on this attachment so it's fairly limited in the range of cutters that it can sharpen I think about 50 millimeters maximum also, when it was nice and new, you can see the shaft was shiny and now it's all scratched up. And that's because of the grit getting inside. Um, that's the biggest problem with this thing. You will be sharpening a cutter and it was nice and smooth. And after only a few passes, the grit got, got over on the shaft. And then it goes inside and it starts binding up and causing all sorts of problems. It really needs some seals on both ends to be... Um, a proper tool. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and as always don't forget to like and subscribe.